Hello, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Dom. Uh, today we're going to be cooking garlic, prawn and courgette pasta. Um, the ingredients you'll need are some prawns. I bought whole king prawns and shelled and deveined them myself. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, I will put a link in the video description uh, of a video of how to shell and devein prawns. Um, filming me doing it turned out to be a, a long and fiddly, laborious process where you learnt nothing. So uh, I'll let an expert do that. Some garlic. Lots of garlic. Um, we might not use the whole clove, whole, whole bulb, sorry, but we will use a lot of it. Um, this dish has a lot of garlic in. A courgette. Um, feel free to add more courgette if you wish. A lemon. And dill. Um, fresh dill is perfectly fine, but uh, we're in lockdown, so I'm using dried dill. Why, you might ask, am I using expensive squid ink pasta? Well, the aforementioned lockdown means that I have randomly have this in my cupboard. Uh, it was planned for a dinner party that has since been cancelled, so we're using it. The other optional ingredient is an onion. I'm not going to be putting an onion in. Um, because my mum tells me not to. Uh, this is her dish. Uh, shout out to mum. But if you are making this for uh, more people than just two or four, then adding an onion or two helps the flavour of the sauce go a little bit further without having to buy more expensive prawns. First things first, we're going to peel the garlic. Or we are in a minute anyway. Um, if you Separate your garlic cloves, plonk them into a bowl of hot or boiling water. You'll save yourself a lot of time later. The hot water separates the skins slightly, um, which means the peeling becomes a lot easier. So let's put all of our garlic into the hot water, put it to one side and do everything else first. For those wondering, but Dom, what have you done with the prawns while you're doing all the rest of it? Obviously, they're in the fridge, staying cool. Never leave seafood out while you're doing other tasks. We're going to cut the courgette. I like my courgette cut into batons. Um, more of a tradition for this dish. That's how my mum did it, so that's how I'm going to do it. But as long as they're roughly this size, uh, it doesn't matter how you cut them. All looking a bit like this. Uh, repeat for the rest of the courgette. There we have all of our courgette. Lovely. And for a little peek behind the camera, here's the lemon I showed you earlier, but I have since found that we have a couple of half lemons in the fridge. So actually, I'm going to be juicing these monstrosities. Uh, so if yours doesn't turn out exactly as mine did, it's probably because you used a lovely fresh lemon rather than one some that have been sitting in the fridge for a while. If you happen to have a better lemon juicer than me, uh, and you don't end up with pips in your lemon juice, then this next step is totally irrelevant. Um, but I'm going to use my tea strainer to separate the pips out. Because this is what I use. When peeling garlic, um, probably don't use something this big. Um, but it's what I have to hand, so that's what I'm using. Um, I top, tail, and then with the flat of the knife, crush slightly. At this point, that means that the skin should... All just peel off. Some of you will point out that that means we lose a little bit at the top and the bottom of the garlic. I agree, but what we lose in garlic we make up for in time. And then we have 10 cloves of garlic, which I think is probably just enough for this dish. But as you can see, there's still some more garlic in the bowl. Um, what I'm going to do is peel the rest of that and just store it for cooking later, along with uh, all the time that we saved. And now cutting our garlic. Um, We'd like our garlics to be in medium-sized slices. Um, we do want to see them on the plate. So if you think these are too big, then feel free to grate your garlic. But um, I'll talk about how you need to fry them more carefully later if that's the case. Um, but yes, uh, for this dish, I like slices of garlic. And there we have our sliced garlic. Um, a quick tip if you happen to be making this for 30 or 40 people, 
Um, do wear gloves when cutting the garlic, though 10 to 15 cloves is absolutely fine. Uh, the oils within garlic uh, are corrosive to human skin, um, and if you have to do 30 or 40 cloves of garlic, um, you, some people, especially those with sensitive skin, will find that their skin starts to blister. Uh, it was at this point in the video where Dom's tripod broke. So, um, excuse the odd camera angles going forward, but um, there's not much to go. Here's a pan uh, with olive oil in on medium heat. Um, we're just waiting for that to heat up and then we're going to add our garlic. In goes the garlic. And we want to get that moving straight away. Garlic has a propensity to stick uh, and we don't want that. And we want it a, pro a lighter brown than we would normally do if we were making a, a, a tomato sauce or something like that. We just want it to colour ever so slightly. There you can see we're just getting a little bit of colour around the edge and some of them are starting to curl perfect as your courgettes. And the heat down ever so slightly. Bit of salt. Bit of pepper. Keep stirring. Some people might find this step a little bit tricky because what I want to do is fry the courgettes but I don't want any of the garlic to burn. If you are concerned about uh, your pan frying skills, all of this can be done in the oven and you can just roast it all. Um, I would then cut the garlic a little bit bigger, um, but yes, nice and easy. So there we go, you can see all the courgette is starting to colour uh, the garlic isn't burnt, so ready to put the prawns in. In go our prawns, straight from the fridge. And these are going to cook really quickly. And there you can see we've got a nice bit of pinking on the prawns. If your prawns started off as pink, then you can tell they're starting to cook because they'll start to pull together and become a little bit smaller. Next dill. Uh, those that know me will know that I am very generous with the dill. Some may say over generous, but um, this is to your own taste. And last, the lemon juice. As you can see, the lemon juice pulls all the lovely flavours off the bottom of the pan, gives the prawns a last steam, and caramelises the whole sauce. Delicious. Right, onto the pasta. Here's a pan of salted boiling water that I prepared earlier. If you do have someone to help you, uh, or you um, enough, have enough hob space, I recommend doing the pasta and the sauce round about the same time so they finish, finish together. To this boiling water, we're gonna add our unnecessarily squid ink pasta. And we're just gonna give that a shuffle with our tongs. Whoa, what happened, Dom? Did you, did you boil the water dry? No, 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 no. I was watching uh, MasterChef Australia videos on YouTube while cooking and forgot to film the it's ready, drain the water steps. Anyway, uh, now we put our cooked pasta into our pre-made sauce. In goes the pasta. Okay, putting pasta into a dish, obviously you can just throw it in, that's absolutely fine, but if you take a nice portion of pasta, nice and high over your pan, and then drop it into the middle of your plate and turn the plate, you end up with a little volcano, which you can then add your ingredients to. A little bit of presentation. And there we have it. Two portions of garlic, prawn, lemon, dill, pasta on unnecessarily squid ink spaghetti. Enjoy.